last video, we connected to a number of different data sources and used Power BI combined with Power Query to model that data. Um, in this video, we're going to be focusing on the visualization and report authoring. So we'll go back to Power BI Desktop and we're going to try and build three different charts along the bottom, uh, two at the top, and then we'll, we'll kind of flesh out our header. So we'll start off with um, market share over time. So we'll do market share by symbol bring that to the bottom left hand corner and we'll add date actually put uh, so symbol in our legend date in our axes and we'll change this um, into a line chart and we'll change our date it's automatically built a date hierarchy but we actually just want the date itself okay so there's um, our first chart make that a bit smaller so the next one we'll do marker share by symbol we'll just leave it um, aggregated at the highest level and we'll just convert that into a tree map just make the width of these a little bit smaller okay and similar to excel we can highlight on an element um, in this case the tree map and use keyboard shortcuts like Control c Control v to create a copy um, so we'll convert this tree map into a bar chart uh, with um, Power BI. Um, so at the moment in the axis we only have symbol but we can create drill paths um, by simply dragging in our um, different columns. So we'll, beneath symbol we'll put year, month, and day. And since I've done that you'll notice that we have these new icons now at the top that don't exist on these other two charts and that allows us to drill down a particular path and work, work our way down through the data and then go back up that drill path. Awesome, so we've got our three um, charts. We'll um, set their widths so they're just a bit um, shorter. So uh, we've been playing in the fields area in terms of the properties for each of these um, visualizations, but you can see the paintbrush there. If we click on that, we can do a bit more formatting. So we can search for um, a property called width and we'll set this to 415 for each three of the charts. Okay, and if you're pedantic like me about positioning, you can grab, um, so we'll grab one of these elements, put it to the bottom left, we'll grab the other one, put it to the bottom right, and then this one in the middle, you may not get it exactly right. Um, so say we've got it a bit over to the left, what we can do, similar to PowerPoint, um, if we highlight all three elements under format, we can distribute horizontal and that middle chart will kind of realign itself just so it's perfectly centered. So that's our first three. Um, the next chart that I want to create is a scatter plot. So we'll put that at the top here and give it about 50% mark at, um, in terms of real estate. And we'll put our market cap along the x-axis, our close along the y-axis, um, our legend will be the symbol, and we'll put year in the play. So you'll notice that we've got um, each of the cryptocurrencies um, split out between the legend with the different colors, but because we have a date in this, form, in this, this particular instance, we have the year um, in the, the play, um, it, we can visualize this, um, see this visualization play over time. So if we click on focus mode, we can enlarge this to take up the full screen. We re rewind back to 2013. And if we click on even a particular um, symbol, so in this case, Bitcoin, it'll actually animate the path as well. It's a pretty cool visualization. Okay, so that's the second last visualization, the last one that I want actually doesn't exist in the um, visualizations that are available out of the box in Power BI Desktop. But um, Power BI Desktop also has available to it um, custom visualizations which we can get from the marketplace. So if you click on the ellipses and say import from marketplace, there are a number of visualizations that are available. By, um, from the community. You can also obviously develop some yourself. Um, 
the language that's used is like TypeScript and you can reference external JavaScript libraries like D3 and Bootstrap to create your own visualizations. Um, but in this instance, I'll search for a candlesticks chart so since that's pretty fitting for a stock market like attributes like open, high and close. And we'll add that to our report. So the custom visual has been added only to this particular report. Um, there are ways to get custom visuals kind of distributed more broadly if you want one accessible by a whole organization, for instance. Okay, so we'll drag over our attributes. So open, close, high, low. And again, on the axes, we want the actual date. But um, in this instance, we're going to need to apply a filter because um, we can only have a candlestick on one particular currency. So what we haven't used yet are th these filters. And you'll notice that we have um, three different levels of scope. So we have filtering that can be applied to the specific visualization. Um, but one level higher than that is the page level filters it will be all visuals on the page. And if you go one higher, uh, one level higher even more, we also have the report level filters. Um, one that supersedes all three of these is obviously any filtering that we would have done in um, Power Query as we're doing our data modeling, which wouldn't even reach the report itself. So in this instance, I want to drag symbol into the visual level filters, pick Bitcoin. And I also want to filter on date because I just want the month of May 2018. So we'll scroll down and say advanced filtering is on or after the 1st of May. and is before the 1st of June. I'll click apply, and there's our candlesticks. Nearly done. Um, last thing that we wanna do is add a header. So I'm done with our visualizations. Now we can add um, some shapes to create um, so some background color for our header. So we'll drag in a rectangle, and I wanna get rid of this line and change the background color. So we'll open line, reduce the point size, change the fill. We'll add an image as an icon. And we'll add some text. Call this cryptocurrency report. Increase the font size. Just reduce that a little bit. Okay. And finally, we can just rename our tab as well. So we'll call this crypto. Uh, actually, we'll call it summary. So that's it. We've basically, we've built a report. We can save a, a copy that's local to our machine. Okay, so let's go through some of the features. Um, on the ribbon, we can refresh the whole report. Um, so if our underlying data changes in a single click, we can refresh. We can also quickly um, change the color theme. So when within each of these visualizations under the formatting, the data colors obviously are manually adjustable and there's a default color palette that's been applied. But um, if you enable the um, theming functionality, which is in the preview, uh, we can import a theme that's held within a JSON um, document to completely change the color. So you, this might be a really easy, good way to kind of get some corporate branding. Uh, so we'll just go back. Um, other features that we have, so if we click on an element, um, we can shine a kind of what they call a spotlight, which really brings the visual into focus and then everything else out of focus. I showed before that clicking the uh, focus button here opens up a visual into full screen. So this is called focus mode. And you'll notice as I'm clicking around that the visuals are all interactive. So if I click on Bitcoin, the other charts will filter just to Bitcoin. Or if I click on a particular candlestick, uh, we may just get that date's worth of data, for instance. And you can control in terms of um, these interactions if you don't want certain graphs to be um, interacting or filtering or another one. So all that's within your, within your control. Lastly, um, we can also 
um, touch on some of Power BI's more advanced kind of forecasting features. So let's copy this trend visualization onto a separate page. And we'll filter to a specific uh, symbol. So we'll say we just want Bitcoin. So we no longer need symbol in the legend. And with the chart in focus, this last um, button here, analytics. So if we click on that, uh, we can quickly add things like trend lines. And if we scroll, go to the bottom, we can see forecast. So if I wanna do a forecast, click add, you can add a new forecast and each point represents a day. So I'll say seven days worth of forecasts with a 90% confidence interval and click apply. Now, it's happened, um, you can see it in the bottom right hand corner, but it's kind of really hard to see because uh, the amount of data that's on the pages we're going all the way back to 2013. So if I add a, um, our date into our chart, we can convert this into a slicer, which allows us to zoom in um, on our data. So we'll kind of bring it all the way in and then we have it all zoomed in and I can more easily see my forecast values. So that's it. So that's a really quick way of um, looking at an overview of Power BI desktop and quickly building a report. So I'll just save to my local machine one more last time. And finally, we'll publish um, this to the Power BI service or commonly known as powerbi.com. So I'm actually already logged in. Um, so when I click on publish, um, I won't get prompted to sign in, but you may you may get prompted um, if you haven't signed in already. And um, Power BI is showing me the different workspaces that I have access to but I'll select my workspace, my workspace and click select and we'll publish our report, our PBIX file um, to the Power BI service where we can view it um, online and, and start to do some additional things. So that's it for um, for this video. We've now done the um, report, report building um, and we're often publishing. So in the next video, I'll do a quick tour of um, what that looks like in, in powerbi.com.